The results for women elected are worse than it was before. 2019 general elections, EU observation mission reports make 30 recommendations as it meets APC leadership. Cultivate habits of regular blood donation. Medical practitioners advise Nigerians on World Blood Donors Day. Hello, it's good to have you join us on the Network News tonight on the NTA. I am Jumwa Yusuf. Jennifer Igwe is in Lagos and joining me from a degree is Mohammed Ibrahim. Thanks for joining us. We begin tonight by letting you know that importation of palm oil in Nigeria is now illegal. Consequently, the Central Bank of Nigeria has the mandate to freeze accounts of any firm or individual found guilty of smuggling the product. This is coming from the federal government as the Central Bank of Nigeria sets aside 30 billion naira to boost production and processing of palm kernel. Musa Baba Aliu has details. Nigeria presently boasts of more than 20 million oil palm trees in more than 20 states of the federation. Some of the trees, even though old, still produce substantial amount of fruits, good enough for production of palm oil for local consumption and export. In spite of this, the country spends billions of dollars importing palm oil annually. This meeting holding in the office of the Central Bank of Nigeria is a convergence of stakeholders in palm oil business in Nigeria, from cultivation to processing. Why are you are stopping the importation of palm oil? Head of Nigeria's FS Bank, Godwin Emefele, with the big stick on the stance of government. Our economic intelligence department has started investigating the accounts of some of you, or those of you, who are involved in smuggling or dumping palm oil into Nigeria. A long-term loan facility including seedlings and other input will be available to further boost palm oil production. The government is working out a program on how to acquire land, this is how to survey the land, how we issue the titles on an accelerated basis. This pro program now will give Nigeria another face if it is well implemented. But we believe that if the CBN governor uh, or the government is serious about banning the importation, it will jumpstart um, a lot of development and improvement in the oil palm sector. The EPS Bank says measures taken are not targeted at individuals or particular groups of people, but efforts towards strengthening the country's economy. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. The federal government has extended by two weeks the time given the presidential tax force on the ABAPA traffic gridlock to resolve the matter following a request for extension by members of the tax force and other stakeholders. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity in the office of the vice president, Lao Lu Akandi, indicates that the extension was approved at a meeting of the presidential tax force with stakeholders. The tax force, which commenced its assignment on 24 May, had up to 7 June to complete the assignment, but it's now expected to present a formal report at the end of its extended mandate on June 24th. Moving on now, the Senate President Ahmed Lowen says in his resolve towards ensuring that the governing APC catch up the lost grounds over the last four years, the Ninth National Assembly will insist that government appointees execute their mandate consensuously and with high sense of responsibility in the best interest of the country. Speaking to newsmen after joining President Mohamed Buhari to observe Jumat prayers in the State House Mosque, the Senate President said for next level agenda to achieve its objectives, everyone in government must live up to expectations. Senator Ahmed Lowen also said anyone that is deficient, it will cost the system. We are in a hurry, we are thirsty to perform, 
We want to support Mr. President to the tilt. We want to see Mr. President achieve those legacy dreams that he has. And we are going to work full course and full time to ensure that we give him the maximum support that he requires. And by the grace of God, Nigerians will see a difference, positive difference, in terms of delivery of service uh, to our countrymen and women. Senator Ahmed also, Lowen also said, the National Assembly is committed to passing appropriation bills in good time for implementation within the 12 calendar months. This in the National Assembly as well as the executive side of government that we create a window for budget defense only a dedicated period and time frame say a month of which only budget defense will be carried out in the National Assembly and it is our desire in the National Assembly that before we leave for Christmas break the budget would have been passed and Mr. President would have had the budget before him to sign an assent. In the next level, we're going to see government at ease. Execution of programs, projects, and every other policies of government with ease, unlike the Eighth Assembly. We're very confident, we can see now that the atmosphere is very calm, everybody is happy, that APC got it right this time around. Kudos to the national leadership of our party, and kudos to Mr. President, kudos to the leadership of the National Assembly, and kudos to all members of the National Assembly, the senators and the reps. I think they've done excellently well. President Mohamedou Buhari sends warm felicitations to former head of state, General Abdul Salam Abu Bakr, on his 77th birthday, congratulating him on a life of purpose, driven by a passion to serve his country and humanity. A statement by Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garbashewu, says President Buhari believes General Abu Bakr's visionary and selfless leadership style and willingness for inclusive growth and development sets him apart for commendation. While the handing over to a civilian government in 1999 secured an enduring place for him in history, the President joins family members, professional colleagues and friends in celebrating the African elder statesman and global voice. He prays that the Almighty God will grant General Abu Bakr longer life and good health as he continues to serve humanity. With the inauguration and commencement of sitting by the 9th National Assembly, expectations are high that this time around the parliament will work for the interests of the people. Already, what the lawmakers should pay attention to are being suggested as echoed by discussions on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria program. Daniel Adiri reports. Citing the fact that the task ahead of the 9th Assembly is a humongous one, it is not impossible. As guests in Good Morning Nigeria re-emphasized that there should be good synergy between the executive and legislature for the prosperity and development of the country. If government is introducing any policy or introducing any bill that uh, is a little bit controversial, there's a need to possibly talk to the leadership and uh, Draw their attention, this is the intention of the government, this is why they are doing this, this is why they are doing this. So, so that they have a clear picture of clearly what the government intends to do. But the very fact that the same party produced the president and the leadership of National Assembly is a factor, a positive factor we should celebrate because that would ordinarily mean that the content of the manifesto of the governing party would not need any further debate. Making reference to the issue of national budget, the guests agreed that the National Assembly is constitutionally equipped to objectively determine how funds should or should not be appropriated. Padding, with respect, I, I think we, with this legislature, we will, that will be reduced. But I want to say that <laughs> I am not very conversant <laughs> with Padding. that. I'm not very conversant with that in the legislative lexicon. There's nothing sacrosanct about uh, having a January to December budget cycle. It could be May to, to, to June, you know, as long as uh, uh, we capture the essence of budgeting. This issue of padding, as it's so called, it's a misconception because we are the politicians from the grassroots and we know what our constituents need the most. So when a box is brought in by the executive. 
and the legislature looks into it and sees that whatever aspect is missing that the community needs, then they add that aspect into the budget. They called on Nigerians to keep faith in the Ninth Assembly as it remains committed to promoting and improving democracy. In Abuja, Daniel Adiriye, NTA News. Following a meeting of PDP senators with the party's national chairman, Uche Sokondos, in Abuja, the senator representing Abia South Senatorial District, Senator Eninaya Abarbe, has been named the minority leader of the Ninth Senate. The meeting held behind closed door also had Senator Emmanuel Bwacha from Taraba South retaining his position as deputy minority leader. The senator representing FCT, Senator Philip Aduda, also retained his position as the minority whip. The group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Mekanti Boro, has congratulated the newly elected presiding officers of the Ninth National Assembly. A statement by NNPC's group general manager, Group Public Affairs Division, Undu. Ugamadu says the oil and gas industry would count on the support of the Ninth Assembly to move the sector forward. Baru assures the National Assembly of the readiness of the petroleum industry to work with the legislature to chart a new course on issues bordering on the oil and gas sector. He also expressed the hope that the Ninth Assembly would work in harmony with other arms of government for the development of the country. We are with the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC. Your consumer's rights are protected. To lay your complaint, please contact any of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission's FCCPC offices closest to you with your complaints. You can also call our helplines at 0805-600-2020 or 0805-600-3030. Please, let us go to the hospital. I'd like to experience this for science. At FCCPC, you can rely on us to resolve your complaints effectively and efficiently. Enjoy the best of African football as NTA, Africa's largest television network and hotspots, Nigeria's foremost sports production and marketing company, bring you all 52 matches of the Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019 live from June 21 to July 19, 2019. Yes, all 52 games will hit your screens in crystal clear digital quality. It's your guarantee of a memorable viewing experience and a wonderful cost-effective opportunity for corporate Nigeria to reach tens of millions of Nigerians. For sponsorship and commercial support, contact Abubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. Hot Sports, masters of the game. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Special announcement. The Chief of Defense Staff, General A.G. Olunishaki, cordially invites the general public to the third edition of the Armed Forces and Security Agencies Half Marathon Championship, Abuja 2019. Theme, Together We Are. Date, 15th June 2019. Time, 6 a.m. Venue, Aguinyi Rossi Cantonment, Abuja. Commodore N.J. Bala, Chairman Organizing Committee, announcer. Watching NTA Network News. The wife of the president, Aisha Mahamudu Buhari, has organized a dinner and award night to honor wives of immediate past and incoming state governors of Nigeria. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports. The wife of the 36 state governors of the Federation have also been supportive to the activities of Mrs. Buhari at the state's level through their various pet projects, as well as complimenting their husbands and enhancing the lives of their people. This night, therefore, is remarkable to the wives of the governors, particularly the outgoing, as Mrs. Buhari has appreciated their support through the journey in building confidence and restoring hope to women, youth, and children. Twelve immediate past governor's wives were awarded by the Nigeria's first lady, comprising Adamawa, Borno, Bauchi, Gombe, Imo, Kwara, and Lagos. Others are Nasarawa, Ogun, Oshun, Oyo, and Zamfara State. In the last four years, many of you have impacted positively in the lives of people in your states and even beyond.
Specifically, you have touched lives, your hands have healed the sick and transformed the faces of sadness into doors of smiles. For this, you will be remembered and judged positively by posterity and history. I congratulate you for this smooth beginning. Beyond being wives of governors who have public mandates with duty to support, we must also be committed in championing the cause of vulnerable in our society. Mrs. Buhari also awarded some personalities for their support towards the successful implementation of her laudable programs and activities through the Future Assured and Aisha Buhari Foundation. They include the wife of the Vice President Dolapo Shimbajo, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Household and Special Events Mohamed Sariki Abba, and the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Administration Dr. Hajo Saidu. When my husband was elected newly, I personally choose to be called the wife of the president. And after a while, I realized that it's uh, causing a lot of uh, confusion at the state levels because many wives of the governors are confused, either to use the first lady or to use of the wife of the governors. But for the interest of the 36 wives of the governors, I want to be called the first lady of Nigeria this time. The governor's wives had earlier met at the First Ladies Conference Hall to elect their leaders, with the wife of the governor of Niger State, Dr. Amina Sani Bello, emerged as the president of the Northern Governor's Wives Forum, while the Edo State Governor's Wives, Basti Obaseki, emerged as the president of Southern Governor's Wives Forum from the State House, Ali Kabir, NTA News. European Union election observer mission to Nigeria for the 2019 general elections have come up with a report containing 30 recommendations on the election adjudged free and fair. Chief observer of the mission, Maria Arena, at the APC National Secretariat says it is part of efforts by the international community to add value in promoting democracy in Nigeria. Salu Abdullahi reports. The just concluded celebration of Nigeria's 20 years of uninterrupted democratic governance, analysts say, is a further confirmation of the country's position as a big democracy in Africa. With this development, the country continues to play host to development partners who share in the vision of sustaining democratic values in Nigeria. Though details of the report was not made public during the visit, increase in political will to improve electoral process early preparation towards election, as well increased participation by stakeholders, particularly women, are three main issues of concern by the European Union Election Observation Mission. One perhaps of the priority that I can speak about now is the fact that uh, in this election the women situation is less uh, <laughs> the result for women elected are worst than it was before. Uh, and I think it is not a good signal. I can assure you, we have the will that we will work hard towards the, to that, uh, uh, the improvement that needs to be uh, worked on should, will be worked on. National Vice Chairman of APC South, Ni will report that more than 10,000 women from 15 selected local governments are now integrated into the mainstream of microeconomy, uplifting households and reducing poverty level. Job creation, particularly to Nigerians living in the hinterlands, remains one of the cardinal objectives of the President Muhammad Buhari administration. To achieve this, therefore, the administration initiated several programs aimed at providing soccer to the targeted community with a view to making the beneficiaries self-reliant. Shamsia Bashuri, a mother of six from Rangi community in Kiru local government area of Kano State, is among the more than 10,000 beneficiaries of the social investment program. She used her monthly stipend to purchase a grinding machine members of our community from traveling long distance to grind grains. She said the grinding business is generating income for her daily upkeep as she realized between 800 and 1,000 naira daily. Because it is through this government of Muhammad Buhari that we found something new. Like Shamsia, 
other beneficiaries of the program and range community have a success story to tell. They recall that prior to the intervention of the program, the economic status was nothing to write home about, but now a better life for them. They started saving the money. One started with 1,000. Later, they discovered what they were doing with the money and increased it to 1,005. And this has enabled them to start with a small poultry farm. Household of Lifting Program is one of the social investment programs initiated by the Buhari-led administration to ameliorate the hardship faced by the poor and vulnerable. For the monitoring group of the Household of Lifting Program, the progress recorded is commendable. In Kano, Yohana Sahasambaro, NTA News. Still on women development, the need for Nigerian women to get active in governance has once again been brought to the fore at a conference which believes this remains the only key to addressing the challenges confronting women and children in this society. This was at this year's edition of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian University National Women Conference in Abuja. Elizabeth Omori reports that the theme is gender mainstreaming, a must know to all. In 2006, a national gender policy was formulated to promote a 35% affirmative action for women to enable them to participate in governance and also drive home their needs. To this end, this group of women in this hall are of the opinion that for this process to be effective, Nigerian women must be encouraged to take their pride of place and hold political offices, stating that the number of women in governance is still very low. When you look at the ILO's convention, most of the uh, countries hardly, they are even signatories to the conventions, you know, that uh, probably says, okay, it's affirmative, this and that, but yet you discover that they don't really comply. They don't really comply, and that's why the women are still struggling to belong. We have to encourage them, we have to bring them up, because we can identify talents among them. Education, provision of affordable health care, empowerment, access to capital for business, and protection from all forms of abuse were some of the recommendations made to give women a louder voice in the nation's political landscape. Really, women have to wake up in the area of uh, education of their children, taking care of their families. We have to work to eliminate uh, discrimination in the society. The group also appealed to the leadership of the National Assembly to ensure equity and gender balance to promote good governance. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NTA News. In the bid to make significant contribution to the diversification agenda, the National Council for Arts and Culture has for the first time celebrated World Handicraft Day to create more awareness internationally on the vast potentials Nigerians have in handicraft. Ngofa and Shaji report that it is also to ensure that Nigeria's arts and craft compete globally. From the beadworks, beautifully crafted raffia works to the variety of leather works, these products clearly bring to mind the rich endowment of craftsmanship by Nigerians, a sector that is believed to move Nigeria from an ore dependent economy to a more creative economy. At this gathering of industry players in arts and crafts, the question of how to showcase Nigeria to the world, exports its handicraft, and create more employment opportunities was raised. This is the sector that will save this country. This is the sector that I can tell you a lot of opportunity are about. And that's why we believe this celebration is an avenue to highlight and also exhibit the benefit of this sector to the whole world. Handicraft represents the very essence of culture and tradition, promoting the heritage of a country through the use of indigenous materials as well as preserving traditional knowledge. On June 10, 1968, World Crafts Day was adopted by World Craft Council and is celebrated from the 10th to the 17th of June yearly in Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTA News. 
now to health matters. Concerted efforts by governments across the globe have over time targeted better health care delivery. In line with this, Nigerians have been urged to cultivate the habit of donating blood regularly to aid in the reduction of avoidable deaths and morbidity. This was the strong view of medical experts at a media briefing in Abuja in commemoration of the World Blood Donors Day. Elizabeth Omorio was there and now reports. Crucial bits from the heart. No one wants to see these meter waves fail. Heartbeats can stop due to several factors, one of which is shortage of blood. This is Nathan, a lawyer. He's 38 and he has been donating blood for 14 years free of charge. The motive of this is hope and faith. Hope in the sense that the person that is receiving the blood, that is the recipient of my blood, and me too, I'm giving the person another hope and faith that as long as the blood is transfused, that he, he or she will be able to have another life to live. As the world marks World Blood Donor Day, Awareness is being created on the importance of blood donation and blood products to saving lives, as this is a critical component of the universal health coverage. MBTS is sent to migrate its blood screening platform from a semi-automated system to a fully automated system at the center in Abuja and Jos. Considering this year's theme, Safe Blood for All, Blood donation, according to medical experts, remain an important key to improving health, blood production, and reducing risk of cancer. Public education of our secondary school students is being vigorously uh, pursued through its secondary uh, school blood safety program, which seeks to encourage the culture of uh, voluntary uh, blood donation from an early stage. As an integral part of modern medical practice, blood from donors helps save the lives of pregnant women, newborn, accident victims, surgical and anemic patients. Concerned parties are advocating more blood donations to make it affordable and available, as well as the establishment of more screening centers. So, why not donate today? Who knows, you might indirectly be saving your life. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NTA News. Let's now join Jennifer in Lagos for more stories. Good to see you, Jennifer. Good to see you too, Jemai. And welcome to the Center of Excellence. Now, have you ever gone through the stress of searching for blood for a patient in critical condition? Your experience may not have been palatable. Well... All that is changing as 3,000 lives have been saved. How? Joy Ken Abakoya will answer that question in this report. Blood is an important resource, both for planned treatments and urgent interventions. However, in many countries like Nigeria, blood banks face the challenge of making sufficient blood available when needed, while also ensuring safety. Statistics reveal that Nigeria has a high maternal mortality rate with 814 deaths per 100,000 live births. What this means is that three women bleed to death every hour during childbirth. This is mostly caused by postpartum hemorrhage, which is partly the result of a major blood shortage. This challenge is what Temigiwa Tubosun's live bank has been working to address. The company, using technology from search engine Google, has been able to reduce time of assessing blood from 24 hours to 45 minutes. We help hospitals get the emergency critical supplies they need to save their patients' lives, from blood to oxygen and to a few other things. Uh, we deliver these products around the clock, 24-7, seven days a week. Call Me Blood, a documentary by Google, tells the story of how a live bank rider uses Google's mapping technology to swiftly deliver blood in response to the critical need of people across Lagos. Google, in collaboration with the American Red Cross, is at the forefront of using its technology to promote blood donation to save lives. 
delivery times from 24 hours, as you mentioned, to 45 minutes. So that's huge. So we want to showcase that and encourage people to go out and actually donate blood and help save lives. This is an indication that every Nigerian who needs blood can get it if 1% of the Nigerian population donates blood regularly. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abakuya, NTN News. Good news there. Now, the National Salt Company of Nigeria, Nascon Allied Industries, has declared a dividend of one naira per ordinary share of 50 kobo each for the year ended 31st December 2018. This announcement was at the annual general meeting in Lagos. Nenrot Ninamusa reports. The annual general meeting of the National Salt Company of Nigeria, Nascon, was aimed at intimating shareholders of audited financial statement for the year ended 31st December 2018 to declare dividend of shares as well as re-elect directors retiring by rotation among other business transactions. Profit before tax as at 2018 was 6.45 billion Naira compared with 7.90 billion Naira in 2017, while profit after tax was 4.42 billion Naira compared with 5.34 billion Naira in 2017. Management of the company declared dividend of one Naira for shareholders in the year ended December 2018. The management team led by Paul and Fatima have done a great job. We're pleased with our performance. You can always do better and we look to do better. We continue to work to strategize. The market was very tough during the course of the year. Our profit before tax reduced by 18%. However, we intend to catch that up in 2019, respectively. We have uh, three, um, three new products, uh, Dangote Classic Seasoning, we have curry uh, and um, stew mix. There's a huge demand for them, there's a huge backlog, that's why we're even looking at investing more in new machines. Shareholders commended the company for its resilience and efforts aimed at protecting the investment of stakeholders. They have consistently given us dividend, and this year they are paying one error, and we're very, very happy about it. There is a lot of improvement, and I believe by God willing, next year we are going to see a lot of changes in NASCO. Management of NASCO has assured shareholders of a more productive and promising 2019. In Lagos, Nairo Nina Musa, NTA News. Now, for more on business news, let's join Abolade Salami, who is on standby. Abolade, over to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Good evening and welcome to the business news segment. The capital markets can be an instrument for effective economic growth, providing needed capital for the development of the country. This was one of the suggestions made by stakeholders at the forum in Lagos. Deepening capital market activities through technological innovation was the crux of discussion at this gathering. Participants suggested ways to improve a market process driven by technological application. Technology also can aid economic growth by creating efficiencies and by creating reach. And as risk managers, that we need to educate our people more on technology and how technological innovation can be used for the benefit of the economy. The regulatory body of the Capital Markets, Securities and Exchange Commission says efforts are being intensified to facilitate technological innovation at the capital markets with the aim of restoring investors' confidence. That is, is how does the SEC adapt to these new ideas in the market? How do we become a facilitator of these ideas? How do we become a channel through which these ideas will succeed? For the Nigerian capital markets to compete favorably with other markets, the need to address the challenge of skill gap was highlighted. Director General Debt Management Office Patience Sonia says the listing of five federal government euro bonds on the Nigerian Stock Exchange is in line with strategies to diversify the funding base of the federal government and facilitate private sector participation in the capital market. The Director General Debt Management Office Patience Sonia speaks on multiplier effects of those bonds on the economy. Uh, $2.5 billion in February was meant to free up space in the domestic market and also bring down 
lending rates. Because what the government did essentially with that is to borrow externally at very low rates, at about 7 to 8 percent, used it to retire Nigerian treasury bills that it was borrowing at about 16, 17 percent. Okay, so what happened with that one? About 1 trillion naira was released into the market because we simply paid back the investors. We didn't roll over like we used to do. And still staying put with activities on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the market after close of Friday's trading finished in the green, appreciating by 0.06%. Here are details of today's trading. The market returned to the green territory, with the Osho Index retaining the 30,000 psychological line. Volume of shares traded were 145 million, valued at 2.83 billion naira, which swapped hands in 2,445 deals and a market capitalization of 13.2 trillion naira. Fort Oil, Dangote Cement, and MTN closed in green, while Nestle, International Beers, and Wapco declined in figures. On sectoral performance, NSE Banking, NSE Insurance, and NSE Oil and Gas added good, appreciating by 0.230% and 1.12%, while NSE Consumer Goods and NSL Industrial finished in the red depreciating by 1.04% and 0.21%. And that does it on business news. The news continues after this commercial break. Please stay with us. The sound of your shutter hails you as your flash falls on everyday people. In this country of party party and daily blackouts, your camera, they snap memories, they go. Even though 30 billion not day your account, still, you continue to push and believe. And that girl, now you go marry her. That business, now go spoil for your hand. Because at Union Bank, there's a loan for everyone. Apply today. Union Bank, your simpler, smarter bank. Sensitivity is a short, sharp pain that people experience when they have something hot or cold, getting to the nerve of the tooth. If the sensitivity is left alone, it may get worse. Dentists recommend Sensodyne. It's able to calm the nerve of the tooth. The proof's in the results. It works. I thought leaving the country was the best decision for me and my future. I lived for a better life. We were picked up by immigration officials and sent to a detention camp. I spent eight months in the detention camp. There was no food, no water. I saw people being beaten like animals. Some women were raped. Some women were sold as slaves. I thought I would never see my loved ones again. I have made the biggest mistake of my life. I have wasted all my savings. I have to start all over again. Migration is a human phenomenon which cannot be stopped. But if we choose to migrate, we advocate that it should be done in a safe, orderly, regular, and dignified way, and not in a dangerous and tortuous manner. This message is brought to you by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants, and Internally Displaced Persons. One football confederation, 24 teams, six stadiums, four cities, 504 African stars, one trophy. The Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019, comes alive from June 21 with the showpiece final on July 19, 2019. Watch the 52 matches of the tournament live on Africa's biggest and largest television network, NTA, in partnership with Heart Sports. Be part of the biggest soccer fiesta in the African continent as the Super Eagles go on a bold mission to clinch the prestigious title for the fourth time to the excitement of millions of fans across the length and breadth of Nigeria. For inquiries, please contact Abubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. NTA, you can't beat the rich. <laughs> Thanks for staying with NTA Network News. Arising from its new commitment towards creating a safer monetary environment in Nigeria, the Federal Road Safety Corps has successfully recorded 7% decrease in the total number of road traffic crashes and 12% reduction in fatality on Nigerian roads during the 2019 Edil Federal Special Patrol operations. Elizabeth Omori has details of the data recorded. Saddled. With the responsibility of safeguarding lives on the road, the Federal Road Safety Corps Education Officer has revealed that the Corps has recorded a total of 117 road traffic crashes, as against 126 in 2018, representing 7% in the total number of road crashes recorded during the 2019 Salah celebration. 
22 out of the 117 crashes were fatal, compared to 25 of the same period in 2018, representing 12% decrease in number of fatalities recorded. A breakdown also shows that during the 2019 Salah Special Operation, a total of 5,713 offenders were apprehended, over 6,481 offences committed across 2,053 routes covered by the call. Seatbelt use violation recorded 1,492 offenders. According to the FRSC, a total of 155 persons were arraigned during the mobile court operations of the 2019 Salah Special Patrol, compared to 230 persons in 2018, while 141 offenders were convicted as against 221 in 2018. 14 persons were also discharged and acquitted. In the same vein, the court also recorded a significant increase in the number of people rescued without injuries during the period under review. 469 persons were rescued without injuries as against 414 in 2018 representing 13.3% increase. Meanwhile, 54 persons lost their life during the celebration involving trailers, tricycles, buses, trucks and pickups. The decrease in crashes during the 2019 Idel Fitra celebration, the core attributed to improved patrol operation, robust public enlightenment and stakeholders collaboration. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NTA News. And the Ogun State Sector Command of the Federal Road Safety Corps has described as unfortunate and disheartening the fatal motor accident that claimed the lives of eight people and left several orders with injuries at the Kara Shagamu axis of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. This was during a visit to the scene of the accident alongside Deputy Governor of Ogun State, Mohammed Adebowale reports. The victims and their families June 12, 2019, would remain a dark day with tales of wolves. The victims had left their various homes to various destinations without inclination of what fate had in stock for them. Heading towards Lagos Ibadan Expressway at the quarter axis of the road, unexpected happens as what is described as excessive speeding and recklessness on the part of the driver brought great calamities to them, with eight of them lost their lives and 12 others sustained various degrees of injuries. Visiting the scene of the accident, the Ogun State Sector Commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Clement Oladele, noted that preliminary investigations have commenced to ascertain the real cause of the accident. Advised motorists plying the Lagos Ibadan Express Road to be mindful of diversion signs erected as a result of the ongoing rehabilitation work on that stretch as well as other corridors in the state. Because of the reconstruction of the road, most of the vehicles are heated or did not know that there are diversions. They just run into those diversions and before you know what happens, they will have caused a crash. Ogun State Deputy Governor Noimot Salako Yedele also visited the scene of the accident, commiserated with the victims and advised road users to be extremely cautious while on the road. We must be aware that overspeeding is dangerous and that uh, there's a reason why there's a speed limit. We should also make sure that uh, cars, especially these uh, trailers and these commercial vehicles, are there in good condition. Just as the personnel of the FRSC were trying to evacuate vehicles involved in the previous day's accident, the container of another truck also fell off at the same spot, but fortunately, no life was lost. From Shagam local government area of the state, Mohamed Adebowale, NT News. Mohamed has more reports from our Nemi Degree Network Center. Hello, Mohamed. Hey, thank you and welcome to Maiduguri. We begin with humanitarian services. Borno State Government says it will henceforth coordinate activities of international non governmental organizations and donor agencies operating in the state. The state governor, Professor Babagana Umara Zulum, suggested this when he met the United Nations Deputy Humanitarian Coordinator, Yasine Gaba, accompanied by heads of other UN agencies operating in the Northeast in Medugri, the Bono State capital. Mohamed Goni reports. Governor Babagana Umara noted various support brought to the state by the international community, including grants, technical skills, advice, and expertise in different areas, which he said made a difference in the lives of the citizenry. 
The governor, however, observed that the state had in the past faced a lot of challenges with INGO's registration, operation, and the communication to the appropriate authorities, which he said informed the need to create unit within the Ministry of Reconstruction, Rehabilitation, and Resettlement to facilitate all issues concerning INGO's and international community support to Borno State. Borno State government must to lead the process while acknowledging all your support we must create formidable coordination structure UN Deputy Humanitarian Coordinator Yasin Gaba who congratulated Professor Babagana Omar Azilum on his assumption of office also expressed confidence in the governor in his quest to address the challenges confronting the state we are here as the international community in support of the government of Nigeria to deal with he said the UN and the international community will continue to support the government and people of Borno in the efforts to restore normalcy in the state. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. Massive participation and creating awareness among the larger populace towards donating safe blood for all to save lives was the focal point of this year's World Blood Donation Day in Medjugorje, the Borno State Capital. As part of activities commemorating the day, the National Blood Transfusion Services Northeast Zonal Center in Medjugorje organized an outreach to draw attention to the significance of blood donation. Abokar Mohamed Musa reports. Officials of the National Blood Transfusion Services Northeast Zonal Office in Medjugorje moved out on location to University of Medjugorje campus for this year's blood donation outreach. The people suffering from blood issues, let them not suffer from blood issues. So we have enough, it's good to share it to others. For me to be able to assist in helping someone more, especially who is in need of, the person who is in need of my help. It's just to save life and it's for my good health. The team from the National Blood Transfusion Services believes that the outreach will consolidate on efforts made so far, especially in the area of sensitizing the general public. There is nothing uh, bad about it in donating blood. We are encouraging our people, most especially here around with all this insurgency, all these IDPs and the rest. We have high number of cases that require prompt blood donation. It is not only simple and rewarding to donate blood, but it makes the donor more healthier, both physically and mentally. Encouraging blood donation through outreach campaign, especially on the Blood Donation Day, is an exercise sustained to ensure there is a pint in the blood bank for emergencies. In Meduguri, Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa, NTA News. Time to take another commercial break. Network News continues shortly. These days, People get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. One football confederation. 24 teams, 6 stadiums, 4 cities, 504 African stars, 1 trophy. The Africa Cup of Nations Egypt 2019 comes alive from June 21 with the showpiece final on July 19, 2019. Watch the 52 matches of the tournament live on Africa's biggest and largest television network, NTA, in partnership with Hot Sports. Be part of the biggest soccer fiesta in the African continent as the Super Eagles go on a bold mission to clinch the prestigious title for the fourth time to the excitement of millions of fans across the length and breadth of Nigeria. Nigeria's premier sports production and marketing group, Hot Sports partners with the biggest, the largest and the number one television network in Africa, the NTA, to give Nigerians a memorable viewing experience. Boost fan support for the Super Eagles to glory in Egypt. For inquiries, please Please contact Abu Bakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. NTA, you can't beat the rich. 
Thanks for staying. Super Eagles sleep in latest FIFA World Ranking. Kene Ima Abudiki has more on Sparks of 